everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host Jennifer and back here who just laid down is our co-host Bentley but he's being a little antisocial so we're just gonna let him do his thing. Okay so today's Monday and on Monday I come on and we show you all the things I've made for the past seven days which is a lot more than I expected to make. Um, and then I also talk about life events, what has been going on in my life. I, this week, we are going to talk, I'm going to show you all my makes, and then we're going to move into the life events, because last week was crazy, and I survived it, and I'm so proud of myself, <laughs> okay? So in case you don't know, I had some health issues. I had my first visit to a new doctor. I also have vision problems, and some of those things are because of, I'm a diabetic, went to the eye doctor. I'm going to talk about those things. I'm going to talk about homeschool. I'm going to talk about all of the things that has happened in the past week, including my makes, but we're going to start with the makes. So I got a whole bunch of batteries that need to be charged up because I have not done that. I have been lagging. Plus we filmed a bunch of videos last week and I just... <laughs> I got a lot done, but not that I, I also see that life is a balance. I got a lot done, but there's a lot of things that got pushed to the wayside because I needed to do other more important things. Okay, so what did I make this past week? All right, I'm going to start with this because this is the one thing you, some of you may have seen a preview of this on, but I have not shown it or talked about it, and it smells so good because I washed it with hand soap from Bath & Body Works. I just did a little quick, quick in the bathroom sink. I gave it a little soaky soak and I blocked it in my bathroom because Mr. Cinnamon built me this amazing wooden shelf for my big giant garden tub. And so there's a, a wooden shelf that goes across it and it's fantastic and it's so functional and I use it more than anything else I've ever been gifted from him. And so I used it for crochet for the first time because I made this shawl and the stitches were pulling up on itself a lot and I just gave it a quick little rinsey washy in some warm water in my bathroom sink and I laid it out on the shelf and I just pulled and stretched and let it dry and it worked so beautifully I can't even tell you because I let it hang off on certain points and because of the weight of the water in the wool it like pulled on those parts to stretch them All right so this is not a pattern or a tutorial however if you want to replicate something that looks like this or has these similar stitches go to the Miss Libby shawl and you can search on the top I will try to remember to link it below just search cinnamon stitches Miss Libby shawl and it will come up I promise you now this is not the Miss Libby shawl it is me replicating it from my memory of what some of the stitches in the Miss Libby shawl were um, this is not as much of a V as the Miss Libby shawl. The Miss Libby shawl is actually a much better shawl than this. So go check that one out. It is, I promise, is better. <laughs> this is for a smaller body than mine. It does not fit my body. So this will probably be a gift or a donate situation to somebody who knows how to take care of wool. Um, this yarn, you may recognize this. I showed this last week. I had two cakes of yarn from... This is from Knit Crate, is Knitology or something like that. And it is, some of you that used to do Knit Crate recognizes this right away. I held them two together because I didn't want to work with that skinny, skinny yarn. So I held two together and I used both of the balls and this is how far 400 yards of yarn went. And I say 400 yards because each cake was 400 yards and I held them together so it was still 400 yards. But instead of a 400 yards of a fingering weight, it was 400 yards of more like a, a thick DK. So this is the shawl. It's pretty, but it's just, I don't like triangle shawls. And this is very much a triangle shawl. I don't like them because they don't come far enough forward on my shoulders because of the way my body is shaped. So it covers and it's just not going to stay like this. It just does not fit a big body properly. Um, 
I could absolutely wear it like this and it would work but I'm not gonna <laughs> I don't like stuff around my neck like that so this will this will move on to live in someone else's house but it is beautiful so I finished that and I used up yarn that has been in my stash for quite some time um, I think Knit Crate went out of business. COVID took Knit Crate out. I'm going to be real honest. COVID took Knit Crate out. So it's been like 2020 or 2021 is when Knit Crate actually went out of business. So this has been sitting in my stash for a minimum of three years. And so I finally turned it into something. And I feel achieved by that. I have a whole bucket. Let me grab it. Actually, this is one of two buckets of expensive bougie yarns that I caked up so that I had expensive bougie yarns that I could just pull. These are my hand dyed yarns right here. This looks like yarn from Joann's. Uh, this is Cascade yarns. So we have lots that I can just pull from and work from this bucket. And I have an even bigger bucket with even more yarns that I caked up with intention of using and I never got around to it because I saved the good yarns. So I made a goal at the beginning of the year to use the good yarns because I have some really amazing yarns and I'm saving them. And what's going to happen is I'm going to save them too long and they're going to get dry rot. I've seen it happen with wool. I don't want that to happen. I've seen it happen with, um, I bought some yarn from the thrift store one time and it was corn silk yarn, which I've never seen before. And I started to try to cake it up and it was falling apart and it broke my heart. <laughs> I also bought yarn, um, what is the brand? It's a German brand. I bought it from a thrift store and the same things like it fell apart when I tried to use it. It's just heartbreaking that yarn has sat around long enough that it's starting to disintegrate. And that can happen within the first couple years. So you need to really work it into a project, you know, so it doesn't get dry rot. Or because dry rot is a fungus. I don't know if you know that. So we're we're this year are making a valid effort to use the good stuff and turn it into something that's useful either for myself or for donations or for a present for someone and so that brings us along to the next project i'm making this i started off making for myself and then after i got so far i was like that's not gonna fit me so it's gonna fit my daughter though and she loves it and it's really pretty this is a top this is made with yarn from Joann's. It is the, it's this one right here, the Casey hand dyed yarns. This one is the color unicorn. So this one is the cotton and lurex. So it's 100%, not 100% cotton. What I want to say is 94% cotton, 6% lurex. And lurex is the sparkly bits. It's really, really sparkly. is really sparkly is beautiful this color is amazing and again i'm holding it double <laughs> i'm using five point millimeter dots hook i have them both lined up in my big sully because it keeps everything where it's supposed to be and you see how big it open that hole is because i ain't moved it so i just carry this from place to place and it just keeps pulling and the cake stays open has not collapsed on itself yet is doing good and it keeps everything nice and organized I'm holding this double so instead of this being a fingering or a lace weight this is more along the lines of a DK it's actually close to a worsted we'll say DK though five millimeter crochet hook this is very similar 
to the Falling Leaves poncho that is on my, ch again, if you want the tutorial, cinnamon stitches, Falling Leaves poncho, you connect it under the arms, you got yourself a really cute shirt, okay? It doesn't have to be a poncho. <laughs> Very similar to that. The colors are beautiful. I actually, this fits on my body. See if I can get it on without unraveling it a whole bunch. It's just, I would prefer it to be a little bit bigger for me to actually wear it. So it's going to my daughter. It's a little bit big on her, but it, it looks, isn't that pretty? So this barely covers right here. <laughs> it is right here. But, and we don't have a whole lot of the colored yarn left, but if you guys remember, I had a bunch of this yarn left over from a top I made her for the Fallout Boy concert. And again, this is held double, and this is cotton and Lurex. This one is, I think the Stenley yarn. Souffle Luxe. Yeah. Stanley Souffle Luxe. This is actually two giant cakes of it that I held together to make her top. And so what I'm going to do when I run out of the unicorn, because it's basically the same yarn, and this is also held double, I am going to complete the bottom of the shirt with the black, which I think is going to be so pretty. And then we're going to put trim around the sleeves in black. So that's what we're doing. This is about halfway done. This will probably be done by next weekend, by next Monday. No, it won't. No, it won't, because we got big events coming up next week. So this, I don't know when this is going to be done or when we'll be able to finish it and show you, but um, it fits her like a dream. It looks beautiful on her, and the colors are amazing. And so we're working on that. I used to not show my whips, but now I'm kind of like, this is what we're working on in case anybody gets inspired by that. Like, hey, this is what we're doing. And besides, that's two tutorials that I already have put up on the channel for you guys. I mean, it's not exact. I did make changes, but you can make changes too. Change the stitch. I don't care. You can do it. Miss Libby Shawl and the Falling Leaves Poncho. There you go. Now, this is the third tutorial, but I, this tutorial was last week. So, you guys remember we made Frankie's brain. And we made Treebeard a brain. If I only had a brain. Da -da 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 -da. But these are also, they're little scrubbies, right? <laughs> they work really good for in the bathtub, the shower. Um, I definitely would not wash dishes with these because could you imagine getting nasty stuff stuck all ugh, ugh. But these make really good loofahs, but they also make really cute brains and when I put it in the other day, I was like, okay, that's a little too rounded. So I just put it on the desk. I smashed it and it becomes more flat and it looks more brain like. Right? Same thing with old tree beard. Like you have it all round, but then you give it a good smash. It looks more like a brain. That was a tutorial called Brain Lufa. And then I told you guys during the tutorial, I had some really, this isn't quite hot pink, but it's close. This is called Peony. This is homespun yarn. A lot of people call this hell spun because they hate working with it. I happen to love homespun, okay? I am one of those weird cuckoo people that love homespun. As a matter of fact, I believe that this was gifted to me because said person said, oh, I hate homespun. I bought it, thought I could use it. I know that I've been gifted a lot of homespun over the years. I've been gifted enough homespun. I made myself an entire blanket out of homespun, which is upstairs in my closet. It is soft and squishy and delicious. I had two in this peony color, which is, I'm calling it hot pink. And then you guys remember, I showed you the fantastic yarn bowl that I got from Joann's, which has an amazing echo in it. Echo! And a lot of people are complaining that this has sold out everywhere and they can't find it. 
I do apologize for that. I am on the late train. I was not the first person to discover this yarn bowl. Uh, a lot of people told me that they saw this on Alt Knots, and Alt Knots is fantastic. She is another colored hair freak just like myself, but she is obsessed with Halloween way more than me. I tend to keep Halloween in the fall time and she celebrates Halloween and spooky things all year round. So go check out Alt Knots. Tell her I said hi. Um, apparently she showed this yarn bowl before I did. I did not see that video. I have not watched yarn videos in probably since March. I have been watching either other stuff, but also you guys know my life has been kind of insane this year. So I have not watched, I don't watch other people yarn videos anymore. Um, I'm trying to get my life together and so because of that I didn't see that she posted this um, yarn bowl or else I would have bought it a long time ago and told you all about it a long time ago. Um, I saw this in a Facebook ad while I was making, well, I was making, I was making this one. I was making this one, which was a total screw up. Somebody told me this looked like coral and I tend to agree this definitely looks like coral. Um, but also that's probably just going to be a scrubby for somebody. So we got the yarn bowl, which is enormous. I thought this was going to be like half the size. I didn't expect it to be that big, but I knew he needed a brain. And I knew I wanted him to have a pink brain for some reason. Like I wanted electric pink. Now I have fluorescent yarns over here. Could have used that. I could have used that. But homespun is a bulky number five. And I'm like, if I use a fatter yarn, I don't have to do as many rows because if you remember in the tutorial, every time you do a row, you're timesing the stitch count by three. So this starts out with a stitch count of 25, which moves up to 75, which moves up to two something, 225, then that moves up to 675. And then the next row is 675 times three, which is where this behemoth comes in. <laughs> Tell me that is not fantastic, okay? Is that not the coolest brain you've ever seen? This one does not have a handle because it's literally just a brain. Okay. Um, I, I, I actually didn't do the full four rows that I expected. So this goes to the last row on this is the fourth row is 675 stitches. I did a fifth row on here. So it should have been 675 times three. Okay. Well, I got to a point where I used an entire ball of this and I was starting with the second ball and this is a half a ball. So this is one and a half balls, which means it is I'll do some math. Because I already did homeschooling today and my brain is done. It's like you were done with the math. All right, 185. Divided by 2 is 92. So 185 plus 92. This is about 277 yards. Or 9 ounces. <laughs> it's, it's, it's life size. Actually, it's probably bigger than my brain. It's pretty close to life size. All I did with this is I used a bigger hook. And I think, yep, I used a six and a half millimeter hook with the homespun and I just did one whole extra row almost because I got to the point where I was like, I'm so done and I just cut it and I tucked in the end and I called it a day. So this is not a full, there's not a full fifth row on this because I just could not, I, I was tired. There's a lot going on this week homeschooling, doctor's appointments, pain. There's a lot going on. I was like, I'm done with the brain. I just need it to be done. And you can't tell that I cut the row in half. I mean, if you really look, there might be some parts like right here where it's not out as much. It's a brain. Brains are not symmetrical. I mean, brains are not perfectly round. I'll say that because they're kind of symmetrical, but they're not, you know what I'm saying? Like there's fatter parts and then there's smaller parts and then there's like the back part. Okay. So when I first finished it, it was like a perfect round scrunchy ball and it went in his head and just sunk to the bottom. I was like, that doesn't work for me. 
I don't want to see his brain behind his eyes. So I sat it on the table and I smacked it. And I flattened his brain out a little bit. And then I moved it around so that it sat on top. And you can tuck it in a little bit and play with it. And make it look more brain-like. Or give him a little curly cue like his brain is like a 50s like a greaser where it gets a little curl in the front. <laughs> uh, I have way too much time on my hands people. All right. I love him and his brain. I, I think it's so cool and it makes me so happy. <laughs> so I created three brains this week. A shawl and half of a top. And he is going to take his place back on this empty shelf here because that's where he belongs. And these two little geniuses are going to go on my mantle probably. They're fabulous. I had so much fun making brains this week. And, you know, sometimes you're like, sometimes as a creator... You get these ideas and you're like, okay, but is that just too off the wall? Is it too wild? Are people going to think you're crazy and unsubscribe? These are thoughts I always have. Because, like, it's really weird to make a brain out of crochet. Like, who is going to do that? But it's fun. And sometimes you have to just do the ridiculous and just... <laughs> just have fun with your yarn, okay? It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't. Get yourself some cute little brains... Get yourself some cute little planters with their open heads. Um, like I said, Tree Beard is actually probably going to get a plant inside his head because he's Tree Beard. Um, but yeah, super exciting. Super fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed my week of crocheting. Everything I did this week had no purpose except that I wanted to do it and I did it. It, it wasn't for the channel. I mean, the brains, I knew I was going to do a tutorial on for the brains, but I really just wanted the brain. I needed to have a Frankenstein with his brain sticking out because it's Frankenstein. <laughs> okay? I have an obsession with Frankenstein. Is he not the cutest thing you've ever seen? And they have stuff like this at Michael's this year, too. They actually they have a couple of things that are Edgar Allan Poe, which I love Poe. I love Poe. I have Poe's entire book of uh, poetry. Uh, my 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 daughter loves Edgar Allan Poe. Um, some of it is kind of irritating that they have Poe sitting on a toilet. I don't think that's cute or funny. But the fact that they have like Poe busts, I think those are so cool. But I'm more of a Frankenstein girl. So even though I love Edgar Allan Poe, I had to go with Frankenstein. Um, I have seen Frankenstein stuff like that where it's just his head at TJ Maxx and Michaels, but I don't think either one of them are opened heads. And the one at Michaels is not, Frankenstein's not green, he's skin toned, and so I don't, that's kind of creepy. Like, he needs to be green, okay? Um, I had fun, I had fun. We're opening the Halloween spirit, or the, yeah, the Halloween season early. We're getting some crazy kooky stuff going on. All right, so with that, now this part of the video is where I talk about personal stuff. So if you don't care about my personal life, you can go ahead and give me a like and click off the video. It's all good. If you don't want to um, hear what's going on in my life, that does not hurt my feelings at all. Just don't be rude about it. I don't need to know whether you watched it or not. Although I do know whether you watched it or not because my statistics show who watched it and for how long they watched it. Well, they don't give specific... They don't say, Mary Ann watched this for 30... They don't do that. It just says... This is the age range of people that watched your videos. This is how long they watched it for a percentage, and et cetera, et cetera. I do see that. But with all that, let's get on to the personal life. Um, we started Homeschool Tuesday. And we just wrapped up Friday when I'm recording this. Because I'm rec I record Monday Makes on Fridays now because I don't like working on the weekends. We made it through our first week of homeschool and it was fantastic. And I don't know why I've been so afraid of homeschooling for this long. I'm going to turn this down because we don't need to see anything bright. And it's blaring in my eyes. <laughs> Even Little Man has really enjoyed homeschooling and I didn't expect it to be this good. I thought he was going to fight, and he may fight me in the future. There's probably going to be days where I don't want to do school today, or this is dumb, or what I know that's probably going to happen. 
but this week like it just went so smoothly I was not expecting it to be I have been stressed out and preparing for the this week since May honestly because if you don't know if you haven't been around since before May my son has ADHD and up until this year it has been handled properly this past year our school district has lost the superintendent because he got fired because he was being highly inappropriate. There has been a lot of crap happening in the school district. Uh, as a matter of fact, this week, one of our vice principals of the elementary schools got arrested for beating a five-year-old. Last year at the end of the school year, another school employee, and I don't remember if it was a teacher I want to say it was a teacher, beat up a six-year-old. Um, there was also a teacher at one of our elementary schools that got arrested with her husband for doing meth in the parking lot. I don't live in the ghetto like I grew up living in the ghetto. Okay, so I expect as much as these teachers are in a well-funded school to not be so stupid and drug addict-y and like all the, like, <sighs> there's so many problems in our school. Racism is huge in this district. Huge. Like, you don't realize racism is still so big in the South until you live in the South and you realize it's still a huge problem. Huge. Um, when Juju was still in high school, there was a fight between the races. And it was a kid actually got knocked out and had to be hospitalized because he had a really bad concussion. I mean, it's just... And it was over racial tensions in the school. Um, that is the least of the problems because my, my, my beautiful, brilliant ADHD child got bullied severely last year he was being beat up on a daily basis and he was being called again racial slurs he was being called i mean it, it was so ridiculous and then when he finally at the end of the school year had enough and started to fight back oh the vice principal called and just laid into me while yelling at my son on the phone my son got hit with an orange in his back so hard that it exploded across his back, stained his shirt, and left huge red marks across his back from another student. And I told them he needs to be removed from that class. And they wouldn't do nothing because, oh, this kid, they kept making excuses for this kid. He's got behavioral problems and he's got this. And he, he, he's comes from a, uh, he was, I don't know if he's in foster care or his grandmama was watching him or what was happening, but that was the excuse. And nothing was getting done. And I was in that school every day towards the end of the school year. And then when he finally stood up for himself and I'm getting yelled at after they refused to do anything to help him. I had enough. We're homeschooling now. Because mama's going to end up in jail because I'm going to hurt somebody. for They're not protecting my child. My kid should be learning, not being terrified. Like this is... Lucas started having behavioral issues because he is constantly being hit called names just abused and his teachers not helping him the vice principal wasn't helping like it was heartbreaking and so hard to deal with and i made the decision without mr cinnamon that he was going to absolutely be homeschooled because he is not going back to that school And we had a couple of teachers along his path that were really good teachers and they knew what they were doing and they knew how to handle ADHD students. And just last year was a cluster. It was just horrific. And so I told Mr. Cinnamon pretty much because Mr. Cinnamon doesn't know how he feels about homeschool yet. And that's okay. Um, I told him this is what was happening and we're going forward with it. And I have stepped up and I... I'm the one that unenrolled him from school and I'm the one that took the initiative to find a program for us to have a cu curriculum to base our learning off of and I'm the one that's done all the research. And Mr. Cinnamon is very hesitant to, to all of it and that's okay. 
But this week has really proven to me why this was the right step. When little man needed a break, I gave him one. Get up and walk around the house. Go play video games for 15 minutes and come back and finish your schoolwork. Our schooling, our book learning is done by 1.30 every day. He's zooming through it because he's really smart. And I'm seeing just how smart he is. His brain computes things at a level probably 10 times what my brain is computing. And I myself believe that I have ADHD and I process things quickly. He's, his brain is way beyond what mine is and it's so cool to watch. He was looking at numbers that were in the billions and hundreds of billions and he had to break down the number and characterize it and say what the place value was. So six is in the hundred million spot or whatever, right? He has not done schoolwork since May. And he just was like on it. And I, I was going to go slow this week and I was like, okay, we'll start with whatever the online curriculum is and then next week I have several textbooks and workbooks that I'm also incorporating just to back up what he's learning on the online curriculum. And I was like, we'll start this week slow and then we'll next week we'll put in worksheets. Well, he was plowing through the work so fast. I was like, you have time to do the worksheets. So I'm going through his workbooks and I'm finding worksheets that go with the online curriculum. The workbooks were all of seven to $15 on Amazon. They're really good curriculum books. The online program has a lot of this, like I'm so I bought two full curriculum books. One does not have science in it. And the other one has minimal science and minimal social studies. So I also bought a, um, a science workbook because I, he loves science and I'm going to pad the heck out of his science learning. So he's got two full curriculums that he's going to do with science because the time for learning is really lacking in science. Like the science is minimal. And so I'm going to pad that and give him an, an extra curriculum, which he does not have. Any, like he's whipping through it. Um, he's doing really good with the math. So I this week, because he's plowing through and I'm like, okay, these workbooks have worksheets to go along with what he just learned. We're going to, before he takes the quiz... He is going to do the worksheets too so that he has done double the assignment so it's really in there. Um, he's struggling a little bit with English. I hate English so I understand. And the social studies is really boring. So because of that I'm going to work in a bunch of worksheets probably in a couple weeks because right now he's learning about indigenous people and I don't have worksheets on that. And um, Last year, he studied hard on the indigenous people because he went to Jamestown and he did all that. Um, he learned about like Pocahontas and like all of that stuff. So this year, they're just kind of refreshing and giving him a little bit more information for the the natives that were in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, which I find interesting because I didn't know that. And I'd lived in Michigan. They didn't teach us that. And then... Um, when he's done with this, we're going to start working towards U.S. history because that's what they do in fifth grade. And we're going to start learning more about the states, the state capitals. I got my state map or my United States map up on the wall. It looks really cool. I rearranged the classroom a little bit again. Um, and a lot of the workbook work is maps of the United States and fill in where the states are. And because he has traveled to 40 of the 50 states... I think he's been to 40. It may be 38. He knows where a lot of them are already because he's driven through them. And he knows what it looks like in those states, which is so cool to me. I had a really hard time with geography and learning where all the states were on the map until I started traveling. And then I remember like, okay, when we're driving to Florida, we go from Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. But when we are in Michigan, we would go Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida. So that helps me to remember where the states are. Well, we've also driven back and forth to California a bunch of times. And we've driven from to California from Michigan. So I know all of those states. And we've gone 
on 70, Highway 80, and uh, Highway 10. So that's a whole bunch of different states. <laughs> okay. And so we've also been from Virginia to California and back. And we not only went across the bottom to California, we came back home across the top. So we've been to a great many of the United States. And that helps me to remember where they are. It helps the kids to remember where they are because I'm like, hey, do you remember when we stopped here and then we stopped here and then we stopped there? Do you remember? And I can talk to them about the national parks. I can teach them all that kind of stuff. I have a book on just the national park. So it, it's that part is going to be way more fun than the the online crap that they got him doing. <sighs> it's been a busy week. I'm so tired. I'm so glad it's Friday and this is the last thing I have to do for the whole week. Like I literally record this video, I go edit and upload and I'm done until Monday when we start school again and I start recording again. But so I asked the little man, I was like, as a recap, you know, so far we've made it through the week. How do you feel about homeschooling? Do you like it better or did you like regular school better? Because he's a social butterfly. He loves interacting with people. And I know that that's going to be an issue for him not being around other people all day long. And he said to me, oh, sorry, I'm so tired. He said to me, I like homeschool way better. I don't ever want to go back to normal school. I want to do homeschool until the end. That made me feel good. And I said, now mommy did have an issue today, this week where I yelled at you once, but I apologized to him and I said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell at you. Like, let's try this again. Mommy is a brand new teacher and I'm, I'm still learning. We're learning homeschool together. And um, that was the one incident we had where I got a little frustrated with him because he wasn't, he was putzing around. He was just being a goofball and I was getting frustrated with him because I had other things to do after homeschool and I was just, I wanted to get it over with. And then I realized that this is more important and that I don't need to snap at him and that's not being a good teacher that I need to be understanding. And if I need to walk away to do something else, he's fully capable to do the online curriculum and the worksheets on his own accord. And I double check all his work and, and, um, he told me that I was a really good teacher and I'm the best teacher he's ever had and I'm the best teacher in the whole world. So I'm going to call this week a highly huge success. I enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. Juju had to step in one day and help him finish his work because I had to go to the doctor and her and her boyfriend actually sat with him while he finished his schoolwork and he did good. So, um, yeah, it was a good experience. <sighs> I'm having fun with it. I think it was a really good first week of school. And I I went through and I was actually thinking about all of the stuff. Because the first day I was like, he should not be done this early with his schoolwork. Because you think about like, they should be in school from, like generally, he's in school from almost 9 o'clock to 3.30 is when he was getting out of school. And then I actually calculated how much time during the day he's doing book work and book learning and how much of the day he's doing recess lunch art music like all the extra crap that they shoved down their throat like mindfulness he has mindfulness i don't know what the purpose of mindfulness is but he's never learned anything from it or gotten anything out of it i don't understand mindfulness <sighs> They really have to have a whole class to teach kids to be kind and mindful of their surroundings and how they're acting towards other people. I mean, kind of, because the world is full of Karens, right? But, I mean, I teach him that anyway. And he's still getting, like, the gym activities because he rides his bike and he plays, you know, I'm going to put him in whatever sport he wants to play. And I, like, he's still going to get physical ed education. He's still going to get music because music is a big part of our household. It just is. Like, music is every day. <laughs> he's still going to learn. He's just going to learn the type of music he wants to learn about, not what the government says he needs to learn. And I'm still going to teach him art stuff. Like, art was a big part. Like, I enjoyed art. I enjoyed art history. He's been to museums. He's still going to get that education just from me. 
and it's not going to be as structured and he's not going to have to sit still and be quiet in a chair for all those hours. And I even told Mr. Cinnamon last night, I was like, do you see what a huge difference it is between him being homeschooled and him going to school? And he's all, yeah, because when he's in school, four o'clock, he's getting off the bus. He's in a mood. He's in a mood. He's tired. He's hungry. He's cranky. He's mean sometimes. Because it is hard and frustrating to have to make a kid like him sit still and be quiet for all those hours. And he was getting antsy at one point during the weekend. He's clicking an ink pen and he's twiddling and he's hopping around his seat. And um, he was having a hard time focusing on the really boring English assignment. And I'm like, you need a break? He's all, yeah. Well, all right, go take a 15 minute break. He's all, can I play video games for 15 minutes? You absolutely can. I set a timer on my phone. When the timer went off, he immediately came and sat back down. And he was ready to finish his day's worth of work. It was fantastic. And because there's no anyone else telling me what he needs to learn on what day, and if he really today is not feeling English, he can do extra math and do the extra English tomorrow. I love the freedom in that. I never considered homeschool an option for any of my kids. I didn't think I was smart enough. I didn't think I was educated enough. I didn't think I would be able to put it all together, but I've looked over the entire year's worth of work and I got this. And if there's something I don't understand, I have a daughter who is excellent in English. She's real. she like English is her thing. I have a daughter who is excellent in all she's she is going to school to be a teacher first of all but she has her own things where she I'm trying to think of what subject she likes the most she is a perfectionist so she knows everything and does everything she's not good at math though Mr. Cinnamon is good at math Mr. Cinnamon is good at all forms of history and social studies and government and all that crap that's, that's his life Mr. Cinnamon is a computer nerd too, so we have that. I love science, and I'm pretty good at some maths. And um, I like math, and I like science. And there's things each one of us can contribute to his education that it's very much going to be like a, a, a community effort. And if there's some things that don't fit where one of us can help, there are a lot of co-ops in the area of people who have like, I teach this and I teach that and uh, come over here, I can teach calligraphy, okay? Like there's all these groups in this area. I'm like, all right. And I'm, I'm part of the Facebook group for my area and I just been paying attention to what other people are doing and what they're, and I can do a field trip once a week if I want. I can do a field trip once a month if I want and I can take the field trips to places that correlate with his assignments i live close to washington dc there is a ton of free stuff in dc for you to do that's educational the museum of natural natural history and art there is um the the air and space museum there is several aquariums within driving distance of my house there is um the National Holocaust Museum. There is the African American Museum, which looks like a huge slave ship on the outside. It's kind of scary looking. But like, there's a lot. We live by Jamestown. We like, there's so much about history in the United States that I could teach him, or government stuff that we could teach him, or there's a lot of museums. There's just a lot of things in this area. And so I will never lack for field trips with him. <laughs> There's, I can think of 15 trips today that we could go on and just drive and be there in an hour. Not D.C. because D.C. should be an hour and a half, but look, usually about three hour drive unless you take the train. And even the train is still two hours. But um, I don't know. It, it just has been really, I know it's only been the first week, but it has felt so natural to us. And I've really enjoyed it. I, and I know homeschool is not for everybody. I didn't think it was for our family. I really didn't. 
and I judged other people that were homeschooling like mm, why are you homeschooling now I understand now I understand there's a lot of freedom in it and he's still learning everything he would have learned in school and he's learning extra things that he wants to learn like he can take a computer class right now and he's gonna take coding this year because that's what he wants to do and they're not offering that in elementary school that's like a high school issue you know all right <sighs> moving on we did the the homeschool so now we're gonna talk about my health and the doctor's appointments and everything okay and I'm sorry if the members are hearing this information twice because they get a little more detail than I give you guys just a little bit um, went to the eye doctor these are just readers um, I have these all over the house all different strengths um, I have been struggling with my vision for months now I have health issues that I, I'm a diabetic so my vision changes daily pretty much depending on what my sugar is like if my sugar goes high my vision gets double I get double vision um, my eye doctor is very in tune with what's going on with me and he is very proactive you know he tested my eyes and I no longer need glasses for distance at all he said if I would it would be like the lightest prescription possible I, and I told him I was like I don't need anything because I can see just fine I don't squint to see in the distance I don't squint to see the TV as a matter of fact my other pair of glasses have a real light prescription on the top and I can't use them to see anything um and even the bottom part which I have trifocals in there and so the top is for distance the middle is for computer and the bottom is the bifocal like for um reading and I killed another battery I'll be right back so my up close vision has gotten significantly worse especially my right eye um but he said, essentially, I could pull off just buying dollar store readers, a plus one for seeing the computer, and a plus two for anything close up. My insurance covered readers, so I actually have a different prescription between the two eyes. And so I went ahead and used my insurance to get glasses 100% free, and they're really cute. They should be here, I think, on the 12th. Um, but they're not much bigger than this. And they will just be for readers. Um, so these ones are 1.25, I think. These will work for the computer if I need them for the computer. And the new ones will work for any of my other crochet or reading labels or reading a book or whatever we need for the channel. Um, and then I also ordered an extra pair off of Amazon that is just like basic readers that was, I think, a plus two, I think I ordered for reading etc so yeah the eyes are looking good we have a little bit of other issues that need further investigation in regards to my eyes but um i'm glad that is over with and i'm gonna have new glasses now i also went to the regular doctor and like i said i have diabetes i have a heart condition i have high blood pressure i have high cholesterol i have a lot of things wrong with me some of these issues I have had since I was a teenager. Now, you also know if you've been watching for the past two weeks. Actually, it started sometime after um, my birthday slash anniversary. So it was the beginning, mid-August. I started having the real bad pain in my arms and my shoulders and my elbows, and my hands and my neck. And also, I what I haven't told you guys is I've been getting really bad like stabbing headaches that are way outside of the norm of what I get when I get migraines and a lot of you have given me health suggestions that possibly I have fibromyalgia or possibly this is a birthday present for Mr. Cinnamon that just now came <laughs> that will be in another video because I know what it is <sighs> okay because he told me, he thought, I ordered it, but it's from overseas. It's going to take a while. It's yarn. It's yarn. <laughs> it's yarn. So, the dogs went crazy. The male lady does not like my dogs. She's She had to ring the doorbell because it's international. And she's all, 
I'm just gonna leave it right here. I'm like, <laughs> I love my mail lady. She's pretty fantastic. Um, it's like, you ain't even had to ring the doorbell. We're good. I'm home. <coughs> um, a lot of you suggested fibromyalgia, lupus, um, all of the, the autoimmune issues, which are all on my radar anyway, because my mother had both fibromyalgia and lupus, along with a host of other problems. So I went to the doctor and I described to him my symptoms how my arms feel so heavy I can't lift them some days, how my joints hurt, how um, I get a real bad stabbing pain in my neck, in the base of my brain, up here in my brain is stabbing. Um, I told them how my elbow hurts really, really bad. And that started off both elbows, but now it's just my left elbow. And like, I went through the whole gamut. He goes, it sounds to me like it's a spinal issue because the pain is pretty much radiating out from my neck. I have to have x-rays. Um, we had to wait for the x-rays to see what the next step is. He gave me a long list of steps that could be on the horizon. X-rays is for sure. Possible MRIs, depending on what the x-rays show. Possible chiropractor. Possible, um, that bag is dirty possible um, physical therapy, possible shots, possible surgery, possible, like, depending on what the x-rays say. Could we go this way? We could go this way. We don't know. I know from my mother's experience, she had herniated discs. She had crushed um, in between. Her discs were so compressed in her lower back that there was no cushion left between some of her vertebrae and um she had to have nerve blocks put in she had to have they were one step away from surgery when she passed away and i'm fully aware that a lot of my health issues are inherited from her and juliana has inherited them from me so yeah he said it's most likely a spinal issue I am praying for that it's a spinal issue and chiropractor chiropractor and physical therapy will help. He prescribed me some medicines to help me deal with the pain. He did not give me, um, what do you call it? He did not give me painkillers. He did not give me opiates. He did not give me any. He gave me muscle relaxers, which I don't think I'm going to take. He said it will help me sleep if anything, but I don't feel comfortable with that. Um, and he gave me something else I have to take twice a day. I think it's a corticosteroid. I'm not positive on that. I haven't filled any of them yet. Matter of fact, I've been out of my heart medication and one of my blood pressure medications for a couple weeks now. So like, I need to get to the pharmacy soon and get whatever I'm going to get. <sighs> but that's the health update from Cinnamon Stitches. Now, depending on what the x-ray says and all that, um, I will get, I will keep you guys updated on what happens next. Um, all I know is there are days my arms feel like I can't lift them and they hurt. And he said the elbow thing could be related. Looks weird. It could be related to this issue. He said, or I could just have tennis elbow, which a lot of you did recommend saying that I probably had tennis elbow. Um, I do have the symptoms for tennis elbow and I do keep my arms bent like this a lot. And so that could lead to tennis elbow. And unless I have my arm stretched, like even right now, all this is just lit up on fire. <laughs> so I spend a lot of times with my arm just completely extended out because it's the only way that I have relief. So but we got through this week and we went to see Beetlejuice Beetlejuice um it's not going to be for everyone it is a weird movie but part of it is like the second half is so funny and like everybody in the theater was laughing and it is just absolutely ridiculous like some of it doesn't make any sense and you're watching like but that's Beetlejuice right <laughs> 
um, that was my reward for getting through most of the week and all of my appointments and everything that we had to go through this week. We went and saw Beetlejuice and um, we had a good time. I had a little bit of popcorn. We went to Malawi's Pizza and had gluten-free pizza and that was our dinner. It was a nice evening out with the family. We all kind of enjoyed it. We deserved it because it's been a crazy week and um, I'm glad the first week is done and in the books and I was really stressed out about this week because there's so much going on and it's also the person who suggested that my daughter's boyfriend watch our dogs I never thought of that and it was a brilliant idea so thank you for that <laughs> um, next week is mostly homeschooling but we do have some events coming up this month and they're pretty big events and um, I'm excited about those but again I'm also stressed out because it's in my nature to get stressed out and anxiety about things because I feel like if I stress out about them somehow I have control over them which is stupid and I know this but that's how my brain has always worked with things um but this this past week was I was so worried about it coming up. I was worried about starting the homeschooling. I was worried if I'm going to be inept to do it. I'm, I was worried about if he's going to be willing to be a good student for his mother because we know the kids act differently in school than they act with their moms. They just know what they can get away with with their moms, you know. And it was a good week. It was busy and there were times it was stressful and it gave me a headache because I was stressed out. But it was a good week and I'm very thankful for that and... I'm thankful for you guys for sticking through with this whole video because I know it's going to be a long one. Um, and also, all the people who made brains, like, oh my god. <laughs> the brains make me so happy. I'm looking at my three brains sitting on my desk right now. I'm just like, they make me happy. <laughs> I'm going to rearrange his brain a little bit because I feel like his brain is like out of place a little bit. His brain was in upside down. Yep. And backwards. So, with that, I'm going to let you guys go. And we got a pa package down here, so we're going to open that. Oh, I also, this morning, straight off the bat, threw my phone in the toilet. That was fantastic. I, I've never done that ever. And I literally dropped it right in the toilet. I'm like, gross. And my phone is water resilient but not waterproof so I had to go soak it in rice because there was water in the charging port I'm like Ugh. but it's all cleaned up <laughs> it's all dried out we're ready to go um people are texting me all right it's medical imaging they want to get my my uh x-ray done they also want me to have a mammogram and all the other old lady tests, because I'm of the age. Uh, I, we're not going to go into that. But, um, yeah. We'll open that on camera. I'm going to call Mr. Cinnamon and see if he wants me to wait till he gets home or if I can open it without him. And um, I'm definitely going to record that, though. That will probably be tomorrow. I don't know what else is going on. Like I said, we have some events coming up. And there may be videos missing. I'm going to try not to let any videos go missing. I'm going to try to re-record as much as I can, but with homeschooling and everything else that's going on, I don't think that I'm not going to put extra pressure on myself to get anything done that I cannot physically manage. But, um, yeah. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.